The root of Chinese Qigong, regulating the qi. Regulating the qi is one of the main goals of Qigong training. Regulating includes adjusting, protecting, keeping, and raising. You can see that the definition of regulating the qi is very wide, and the purpose are varied. Many Qigong styles have been created and developed to reach the different goals of qi cultivation. To scholars, regulating means keeping and protecting the qi circulation in the body. To medical doctors, regulating means adjusting and correcting the qi level. To martial artists, regulating means concentrating and leading the qi to energize the muscles more efficiently. To Buddhists, regulating means protecting, nourishing, and cultivating. To Taoists, regulating means building up, raising, training, and disciplining. Although when you practice one category of Qigong, you also cover some of the training done by other categories, the emphasis is different. For example, if you learn to regulate the Qi from medical Qigong style, although you also reach the goal of maintaining health and training to build up your Qi, you will be using methods designed mainly for curing illnesses. Therefore, in order to learn how to regulate Qi, you should know what your goal is and how deeply you would like to enter. Then you will be able to decide which category you want to learn. Nobody knows your body and its inner workings better than you do. After all, you live in it. You are the only one who is able to feel it directly. Therefore, you are the one who is best qualified to judge which Qigong style is the most beneficial for you. If you are a Qigong beginner, I suggest that you start with one of the easiest systems developed by scholars and medical doctors, such as the eight piece of brocade or five animal sports. They are easier to understand, learn, and experience without incurring any potential of serious danger. Training in these systems will teach you the why, what, and how. For example, by studying scholarly Qigong, you may grasp the idea of regulating the mind, and from, practical, practic from practicing medical Qigong, you may come to understand more clearly how to regulate your body. It does not matter which Qigong style you have decided to train deeply. Before you regulate your Qi, you must always regulate your body, breathing, and mind. Once you have gained the experience and understood the theory, you will be able to understand the deeper martial or religious Qigong, such as small circulation, grand circulation, or the marrow brainwashing Qigong more easily. In this section, I believe that we should discuss two major subjects before going on to the general concepts of regulating the qi. These two subjects are a. the communication between your yi and qi and b. two general attitudes towards regulating the qi. Communication between yi and qi, learning how to open communications between your yi and qi is probably the most crucial factors in successful qigong training. There are two ways that qi flows in your body. One of them is the natural automatic circulation which is responsible for the internal functioning of the body. This circulation does not need your conscious attention. For example, you do not need your yi to lead the qi to the organs to keep them functioning. This happens naturally and automatically. However, if you desire to lift an object, first your yi must generate the idea of lifting and this idea or intention will lead qi to the arms to energize the muscles. You understand already that the muscles do not function without qi, any more than an electric fan will run without an electric car. Regardless of which purpose a qigong practitioner is training for, first he must learn how to increase the communication between his yi and qi. Communication means not only that your yi is leading the qi, your yi must also feel or sense what is going on with the qi. This mutual interaction allows you to understand the qi situation. It is commonly said in the internal art society that first you must listen carefully when you will be able to understand. Listen here means to feel or to sense. Only if your yi is able to communicate and understand the situation will you be able to regulate the qi. It is just like in a battle. The general in this headquarters must be able to communicate efficiently with his soldiers, otherwise he will not be able to apply his strategy. In Qigong, in order for your yi, in Qigong, in order for your yi 
to communicate with your chi, you must first regulate your body, your breathing, and your mind. These three prerequisites are the major paths to regulate your chi. After you have regulated these three elements, the communication between your mind and chi will happen automatically and naturally. At first, your mind is able to feel or even sense the chi flow. After you have been doing this for a while, you start to understand the chi. It is as if you are learning a new language. The more you practice and experience it, the more you will be familiar with it and understand it. Only then is your mind able to direct and lead it. Two attitudes toward regulating the chi. In order to regulate your chi so that it moves smoothly and in the correct paths, you need more than just efficient yi chi communication. You also need to know how to generate chi. If you do not have enough chi in your body, how can you regulate it? In a battle, if you do not have enough soldiers to carry out your strategy, you have already lost. In Chinese Qigong society, there are two major attitudes in regulating the chi. Both of them have their own theories, disadvantages and advantages. From these two different viewpoints were developed two major approaches to regulating the chi. One is called Yang Qi and the other is called Lian Qi. Yang means to gradually raise, nourish, keep and protect, while Lian means to refine, train, build and strengthen. According to analysis of the available documents, it seems that the scholars and the Buddhists favor Yang Qi, with the Buddhists becoming the authorities in both theory and training. While the Taoists and martial artists train more Lian Qi, which in regard to health is considered more advanced, it is not surprising that medical Qigong exercises include both and vary according to training purposes. In practicing regulating the qi, it is crucial to increase the quantity of qi while maintaining a neutral state in the body. As you know, excess yang or deficient yin qi will cause health problems and speed up aging. It is important, therefore, to learn how to fill up the qi reservoirs the eight chi vessels, without letting this abundant chi overflow into the 12 chi channels. In the yang chi training, the scholars and Buddhists practice the way of nursing and protecting the chi first. Then they learn to gradually raise or cultivate the chi to a healthier level. This gentle and conservative method is meant to maintain a healthy chi flow without significantly affecting the chi level and natural circulation. This training is especially important when the practitioners are getting old and the qi level in the reservoir is lower. In Lian Qi training, the Taoists work on training and refining their qi and also on strengthening or, strengthening or increasing the qi level in the qi reservoirs. Taoist Qigong practitioners believe that in order to obtain the goal of longevity, not only must you maintain smooth qi flow, but you must also increase physical body or, or you must also increase the chi level to strengthen your physical organs. They believe that the quality and the strength of your physical body can improve, be improved by nourishing the chi correctly. Your body is like an electrically powered machine in that it needs current to run. And if you continually run an inadequate current through it, it will deteriorate quickly. However, your body is different from a machine in that if you gradually increase the amount of current, your body will adjust to the current and will become stronger and start to function better. It is just like if you were able to run 5 miles a day and do so on a regular basis, you will maintain your health and a certain amount of strength. This is the scholarly and Buddhist way. However, if you gradually increase the distance as time goes on, your body, your body will readjust itself to fit the new requirement and your condition will improve. This is the Taoist way. You can see that the scholarly and the Buddhist way is gentle and more conservative, while the Taoist way is more, more active. Sometimes the Taoist training methods are more difficult and dangerous than those of the Buddhist. They always need to keep track of what is happening in their physical bodies as they train and be careful that the qi they have built up is not mishandled and does not move the wrong way. Beginners in qigong should first learn how to keep their qi flowing smoothly. Only after you understand yourself and qigong theory should you start training gradually to refine and train your qi to a higher level. This normally takes at least 10 years of correct practice under the instructions of a qualified master.